Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Super Fantify. This being a show where I talk about TV shows of the supernatural, fantasy, and or science fictional genre. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the series premiere of Aftermath, as well as the latest episode of From Dusk Till Dawn. Starting off with Aftermath, a very interesting show that kind of gets you right into it. Like, there's no, like, build-up. It's not like, oh, life is normal, and then things went to crap. It's like, the moment the show starts, things are already going to crap. There's natural disasters, like uh, storms, earthquakes, stuff like that. Uh, and it just got, we kind of got it thrown into, like, or introduced to our family. Like I said, like, you get to know them a little bit. It's like, oh, this was what life was before, but it's like, nope, straight into it. And it's just kind of like... I mean, obviously, we're going into this not knowing anything. Like, I will note that the family, obviously, our main protagonist, took this situation a lot calmer than I think most people would, considering everything that happened to him. Uh, that basically, the uh, cop, his name is Earl, his nephew, kind of showed up scarfing down food, and then and they saw that thing inside of him, and it's like, whoa, we just shot it and killed him. Oh, like, you know, they decide to stay at the house. I mean, I guess considering what the situation is, it kind of makes sense because it's like, okay, we'll stay here and fortify the place, but that didn't work out, you know? I mean, especially when Brianna got kidnapped, so it's kind of like, okay, never mind, scratch that. We, you know, hopped into RV and everything, which I'm very surprised. Like, I already saw that coming because I saw the previews for uh, the show, but it was like, I was expecting them to have wings or something. It's like, no, they just fly. Uh, considering what they possibly are, that was kind of interesting to me, like, Basically, Josh studying religion and everything, trying to figure out what everything is. That that's my point. Like they were rational about certain things. Like he's sitting there, like, all right, I'm gonna study up and try to figure out what these things are. It's like you know, you normally don't see something like that. And even his wife, uh, Cameron, just kind of like, let's just drop this. Who cares? Uh, let's just. We've been through a lot today, past couple of days. It's just kind of like, like I said, because we don't even know what happened beforehand. Like, you know. Maybe a, a future episode will kind of pull back and show you who everyone was before everything went the shit. Most likely not. They might kind of pull a Walking Dead on you. I mean, because even the Walking Dead, you got a little bit of time. Like, you got to know a little bit of who Rick was before things went down. I know I shouldn't be just talking about other shows, but, you know, just bringing up a comparison that someone might be familiar with. But his opinion about what these things are, the little blue things inside of people, are that they are skinwalkers, you know, from... I don't know if folklore would be the right word or myth, um, legends, um, particularly Native American. I, I, I don't, like I said, I don't know what the right word would be to describe it, but um, essentially they can't do anything on their own. The only way they can do stuff is by possessing people's bodies. And it also seems like there's a little bit of something to that, too. Because we had that um, guy who kidnapped um, Brianna, but the moment he kind of woke up from it, it was just kind of like, wait, who are you? How did I get here? And then after her phone started ringing, like, uh, it transitioned and it kind of awoke again. So it's like, I don't know, like, maybe they go dormant after a certain period of time or something. Maybe her phone ringing reactivated or something, kind of woke it up. Because it was like, it's, for a moment he did, like kind of regain consciousness, and it's just like, yo, what's going on here, like, how did I get here, and everything, so, I don't know, the fact is, that it can fly, that's kind of interesting, like, you know, I've had my different perspective, like, you know, different things have kind of shown skinwalkers to be, you know, different things, like, to me, I've always interpreted a skinwalker as someone, like, you know, who actually, like, disguise themselves as someone else, like, they're able to mimic another person, hence the whole, like, skinwalker aspect to it, but it's kind of like, this is making it so that skinwalk. Well, you know, considering the Native American background to it, it's like they're actually spirits that possess you and everything. But I, I guess I mean you still get the skinwalker aspect because they are walking around in your skin. But you know, bringing it back to Walking Dead, is it going to be one of those situations kind of like, eh, shit happens type of thing? Kind of like we don't know how this happened; it just did. Because um, it's kind of like. Because it's not even just them, there's also a plague going around that basically they're called uh, fever heads. That basically if you're bleeding in your mouth, basically people are going a little nuts because of a plague that's going around. And basically if there's blood in your mouth, I don't know what that exactly means, why that particular thing kind of uh, gives you away. I mean obviously like, I mean, one of our earliest experiences with it was that uh, the uh, cop, Earl, 
just because he was crazy, he was pointing a gun at her. What it also seems like people who are suffering from it kind of lose a little bit of themselves. Because at that point, I was thinking like, wait, so are they possessed by one of these skinwalkers? Obviously, you didn't know that's what they were called at the time. But it's like, maybe like, oh, if you're possessed by a skinwalker, you kind of forget who you are and stuff. Because he even forgot like who Brianna was, even though they've known each other for years. Like, he's known her family for years and it literally just spoke to her like the other day. So... Even he kind of didn't really know who he was. It was like, he's like, like do you, what was my name again? Didn't know his partner's name. So it just, it left very interesting question. Like, it just, it's very interesting to kind of like see that. And I was thinking like, okay, so that's what skinwalkers do to you. But I was like, so I was thinking it was a separate, they were the same thing, but it appears it to be two separate things. So what determines someone being affected by the, the uh, plague uh, being a fever head and being possessed by a skinwalker. I mean, we ended up hearing that very disturbing story about um, that guy who was in Earl's car earlier in the episode that basically they shot, the police shot his brother because at, he was skinning his uh, wife alive. So that was kind of like, ugh. And you had that gas station worker uh, basically wiping off their windshield, trying to clean it with blood, and then taking the head of some some dude's severed head and just rubbing all over the place. Kind of blew himself up because he dropped a cigarette over the spilt gas on the ground and whatnot. But it's just like, I don't know, like, how to take all that in, like, what this all means. It's just kind of like, that's it. It's kind of just kind of threw everything at you, and it just seems like... Obviously, there's the the government tried to act pretty fast, and because it, it from the sounds of it, it isn't just located to this particular town they're in is uh, Washington State, right? It's not just there; it is a worldwide thing. Uh, hard to kind of get in contact with people. It's just essentially kind of the end of days. Uh, Karen didn't kind of want to hear that. She's just kind of like, yeah, if I remember correctly, you know, the kind of sign of the end of days is trumpets and whatnot. And then at the very end of the episode, the radio kind of clears up, the, the signal clears up and he ends up listening to a, a radio station that's, and there's trumpets playing. And she's just like, I don't, I don't want to hear it. So it's kind of like, I don't know. I mean, it, like I kind of figured as much like when it's, well, I wasn't expecting kind of a biblical thing. But it's like, it does make you wonder, is that kind of the route it kind of goes to? It's like, it just becomes like a very survival horror type of series of just like, we've got these monsters around like, because it doesn't seem like there's actually a proper way of dealing with them. I mean, they're going to have to find one because the fact of the matter is they're skinwalkers, they're spirits possessing human bodies. Meaning that the moment a person dies, the skinwalker leaves their body, meaning they can go off and, you know, possess someone else's body. So it's like, you're going to have to find a permanent, permanent, in a way of um, getting rid of them. So, I mean, that's something that's going to pop up in the future. I really like that uh, when the uh, meteor crashed down and it burned. Like, you know, uh, Brianna kind of swept under, like, me for truck. So, I mean, and then you actually got a shot of, like, the city. And it's just, like, on fire, just a like, large pit. Because um, her tw the, the, a very interesting uh, fraternal twins going on there. But, uh, basically, Dana had brought up the, the fact that it's like, okay, if you... Like, if basically one of those meteors or stars fell down, it could basically hit, like, a six-mile... No, basically a... I forgot what the wording she used exactly. Was it, like, one of those, like, if you, like, had, like, a six-mile-wide uh, meteor, it could end up wiping out an entire city from the sure impact, and that's kind of what we got. Um, like, it's just me, like, I'm just kind of throwing this out there. I kept kind of thinking in the back of my mind, are they, like... A step family, what I mean is like, it's like some of the kids his and then some of the kids are hers. I don't know. I mean, it seems like they're all family, but at the same time, it seems like, no, like certain relationship, the family kind of has that relationship with each other, like particularly like the brother Matt, like having with his sisters, it kind of seemed like maybe they're step siblings. I don't know. Maybe I'm just completely reading the whole situation wrong. And wasn't it that Karen has like military training or something? Like I said, I had to go back to the fact is that they handled the situation a lot differently. Like, like I said, they were calm. I mean, granted, Dana had her moment where she was like freaking out and everything, but it's like, I don't know, man. I, uh, I, I am interested to see where the series go. Uh, this is kind of a test run. I don't know if I'm going to like keep doing it for um, this or not. I mean, because I kind of did the same thing with um, the show Hunters. I just I watched the first episode, but I got so caught up with other stuff, and it was just kind of too much at the time, so I kind of dropped it. 
and I've still yet to go back to it, so I don't know. I mean, really, it comes down to next week. If you know, I'm very interested. I want to see what they decide to do with it. I mean, we've already seen the angle of kind of like, oh, like people are infected, they're a little crazy. Um, also, seen kind of like, you know, that survival aspect when that guy he had gotten previously beat up by some people and they took all his food because he wouldn't give them any food, and basically he started waving a gun around at the family, kind of like, okay, maybe I'll take your food, and his wife's telling him to calm down. So maybe see more extreme circumstances like that in the future. I'm, I'm, I am very highly interested to see where this goes, but I mean, like, whether I'll continue, like, I don't know, I might continue watching, I just might not make anything about it. So like I said, it depends on next week. So if I decide to do one next week, then most likely I'll be continuing it. So that's just where I'm going to leave it at for that, so... And now moving on to this week's episode of From Dust Till Dawn, which is a very interesting episode. Uh, like, I, like what I really appreciate about this season, um, it's very horror movie esque. Like you know, it just has that very like this past like when you look back on it, it's like yeah, a lot of the other seasons did too. Like uh, season one and two had that horror uh, movie aspect to them as well. I mean, when you actually break it down, I mean this whole series is based around a horror movie. But nevertheless, it's like I don't know. In particular, this season, because it's, like, very, like, monster-based horror movies. Like, oh, no, there's, like, you know, almost almost kind of got, like, a feel like of, like, a, a 80s monsters mo monster movie or something like that. Uh, maybe even, like, an 80s zombie movie because we had cannibals in this episode and whatnot. So, I mean, there was even that moment where uh, God, Earl's uh, daughter was hiding in a closet trying to get away from Seth, who had, you know, uh, basically turned cannibal. And it's just kind of like sigh of relief, and then he busts through the door. So, like to me, that was very like horror slash thriller esque, especially, especially like kind of an eighty movie. Maybe that was the feel they're going for. Maybe it wasn't, but that's kind of how I got from, what I got from it. I thought it was kind of interesting. I mean, the whole like, like it was still like a hundred percent like unclear what Amaru wanted from the town. I mean, basically, she was steering all this up because she was trying to go after a pure child or whatever. Basically someone who was un the pure one, anyone that's unaffected by uh this disease. It does make me wonder why did it hit um Seth so late. I can only assume it's because he only in you know he only drank a small amount of water. He didn't drink a lot of it. But I don't think the mother drank a lot of it either. Maybe it's just I don't know. Maybe Seth just had a bigger maybe it took a while for it to kind of circulate in his system or something. I don't know. Or you know, maybe it's just like ignore that plot element and just be like, yeah, enjoy the episode type of thing. I don't I mean I don't know. I was just curious why it hit him. Because he didn't he ended up drinking a little bit of water not too long after the mother ended up like going berserk and um trying to eat her husband so but uh I brought it up earlier but uh Earl's daughter I I knew it was gonna happen came to Freddy's like oh yeah I saw Richie I shot him and then Freddy's trying to get her off it's like no 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 he's dead he's like but she's like no no the geckos are smart especially Richie could easily fake their death it's like she sees through this I mean because she studied him very heavily after her dad died. And Freddy's like, no, 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 I'm going to look into this. And she ended up following him, finding out the whole situation, pointing a gun at him and everything. And Richie, basically, to get uh, everything, all cards on the table, he transformed in front of her. She freaked out, and it's just kind of like, okay, now you see what the whole situation is. She does beg up the question, like, why are you working with him? Well, for him, it's kind of a matter of, like, well, he has to as a peacekeeper, you know. I mean, he tried going after them before for revenge against... For for Earl's death, you know, obviously he just kind of decided, like, you know, it kind of wasn't worth it in the end. I mean, this episode kind of brought up that resentment. Like, so far, we hadn't really seen him kind of, like, throwing that in their faces, like, holding that against them. And just the fact is that his daughter's there just kind of ignited that more. So I guess that caused a lot of tension between him and Richie. Like, especially because it's like... Freddie looks cares for her because, like, you know, in a way, she is kind of like a sister to him. Uh, she's a daughter of the man that was like a father to him. So he's very protective of her. I mean, he's kind of blaming Richie like he went after her, but it's like Richie didn't. She kind of came after him. I and mean, Richie did kind of bring up the point that, like, he was trying to get, learn, like, gain control. And Seth was like, of what? He's like, it doesn't matter. So I'm wondering, like, is he trying to learn how to 
kind of get outside of his head, like work through his issues so that he can properly use his power more, you know, the whole eye thing in his hand. Like, I'm thinking maybe that's what that, that is what he's inferring to, because maybe when he uses it, um, he can't really cut through it all and just kind of really tap into it. Like maybe he wants to, wants to learn how to use it more properly so he can deal with Kate, like, or rather Amaru. Or it might be the side effect of, you know, when a um, Culebra bites someone and kind of taps into that part of them. Maybe he feels like he, there's a little bit of uh, repercussions for him doing it. Like, he lets that person's soul into him and it's inside of his head. Their, their very being is, becomes a part of him. So maybe he wants to learn how to control that. I don't know. Like, I guess we have to wait to find out, like, what he really meant by that. Because whatever it is, he's kind of keeping close to his best. Because I didn't even really think about that as being, like, why he was talking to her. I just thought it was just like, oh, you were getting a little flirty. I mean, granted, she did kind of start first but it does seem like everything's possibly okay uh she hasn't killed either one of them yet uh but she did bring it up to Seth that like eventually him and Richie will pay for what they did like even with things being different as they are reality hasn't forgotten the fact that they still killed her dad and I'm sure they regret it I mean really like that wasn't even Seth's doing that was all Richie's like I mean granted Richie I don't know I, you can't really argue that Richie wasn't in the right mindset at the time. He had uh, Santanico, or rather Kisa, in his head. So, I mean, them for now, but it's going to be, like, the fact that she, she threw out that threat makes me think she's going to be a problem in the future. Maybe, I don't know. And also in this episode, we like we kind of see it a little bit. Uh, Sex Machine um, Tanner and uh, Bert constantly going at each other, just like not liking each other, just having a hard time working together. And then um, you had uh, Tanner telling him, "It's like, oh, you should shouldn't have brought a stick to a fight." And, like, and then uh, Bert started making fun of me, 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 thing. Like it's just like so immature. It's just kind of like, and I love the fact that Tanner thought it's like, oh well. Uh, Bert blew himself up. It's like, yeah, it probably just caved in. He's okay. And it's like, nah, he's dead. Just accepted it. And he's like, oh, wow, you're here. I thought you were dead. And it's like, oh, you're so concerned. You really didn't really care. You're kind of okay with him being gone because of less nagging, I guess, you had to do with. So. And we also had the whole thing with uh, Zamina and Freddy. Because it's just like them talking and everything. And she's like, oh, it's very interesting how... Um, Basically, he brought up the fact is that, like, oh, think about the fact is we're sitting here having a civilized conversation, and then you Calibros are here helping out regular people, and she's like, you know, things have gone, things are different, because it's like, everyone's in trouble. Regular people, them, I mean, Freddy, the geckos, as well as regular people, like, things will be bad if Amado kind of rises up, kind of takes this world as her kingdom. And he even, uh... Even uh, led to them end up kissing later on in an episode, which I was super happy about because it's like, thank you, because it's so obvious there's something there. It's it's been so obvious since the beginning of the season. It was just kind of like a little bit of that little like flirtation. You can kind of see it in their eyes. Uh, like I say, I'm very interested to see how Bert feels about that because you can see uh, Zamina kind of kick kick someone off the like she's not paying him any more attention. It's just like, oh yeah, it's so good of you to show up. And it's like, oh yeah, you would kind of show up at last minute, like kind of not caring to be around him. So we still haven't got a clear picture of what went down there, but you know. And an interesting thing happened in this episode where we had Amaru uh, once again. Um, she has control over Kate's body, but Kate is still there reacting because she saw the necklace kind of light up blue the moment she saw Richie and Seth. And so it's just kind of like, oh, the girl is still inside, but she's still reacting to them. And she's basically like, Richie's dangerous. Specifically, I think that power of his with his eye, like she knows that could do some damage that could kind of screw everything up. So she's like, he needs to be taken care of, but not right away. She does want to keep him around. It makes you wonder, is that her talking or is that Kate talking? Because he needs her, needs Richie around because it's the only way she's going to get control of her body or something. I don't know. But then Braz is like, I'll train him to see whether he's worth your time or whatever. And then she's like, like looking at like, who said that you would do anything of the sort? And he's like, oh, I'm sorry for assuming. And she's like, basically bringing up the fact that you have ambitions. He's like, no, I've never said any such thing. And she's like, that's my point. The fact is that you haven't said anything about your ambitions. It's scarier because that means 
essentially to her that just means he's sitting there plotting behind the scenes and it's like what is it that he does want i mean it must be tiresome having to talk to amaru like like i mean part of me thinks like he could easily overpower her in this state i mean i feel like using his powers he could easily kill her but i mean especially because she's still kind of in her weakest form because even when she gets hurt she has to feed on someone before she can heal it's not just a simple thing so it seems like Braz will be able to kill her pretty easily, but maybe he doesn't because he needs her. I, I, what I think would be kind of interesting, what would happen if something like the fact is that, oh, he ends up betraying her, and then uh, Amaru has to turn to the geckos to help her stop him. You know, I am I am very curious, like what she does plan on doing from here because they kind of brought it up themselves because it's like. At this point, what she did, at, uh, I'm pretty sure it's the name of the episode, but it's also the town they were in, is uh, Shady Glen, a specific area they were in, is that she went after humans. For now, Before now, it had always been the Culebras as well as the Geckos that she went after, but now she's going after regular people. And then we also had like, things heating up between Richie and Freddy. Um, Richie's saying, like, yo, we got to make sure that Earl's daughter doesn't talk like he's I don't know why Richie kind of got the way he did I guess he got so fed up because you know it's led to many arguments because it's like I'm sure he regrets killing Earl like especially when it's all said and done like I mean if Richie was really the person he used to be he could he would easily kill her I mean he even said that he's like I could kill her but he's like I could you know but I won't because she's so important to you and rather I turn her so I mean that was him saying that just to kind of uh, get under Freddy, get on Freddy's nerves, but n nonetheless, it's just kind of like, I don't know, like, I do think there's a part of him that does regret it, like, maybe not, I feel like maybe out of anyone, maybe Seth does, even though he wasn't the one that pulled the trigger, but I'm sure he kind of feels bad about the situation, especially with her in front of him, especially knowing that things could easily turn bad, I mean, because very interesting, like, because Seth's whole position here, he was always there to keep Richie in line, he was kind of like, to make sure that uh, Richie didn't get too caught up in his own ambitions, and because his ambition will be the death of him, so he's kind of there as, in a sense, peacekeeper, it's kind of interesting that he kind of acted as peacekeeper this episode, kind of getting everyone back in line, because he's kind of king of this whole uh, operation, him and Richie kind of split it, and it's very, it's very interesting to see how Seth's role is constantly developing. Side note, bounce back from that whole like draining him like that pretty quickly. I guess you give yourself enough time, you, you recuperate, but I don't know, maybe what she does hits Culebros harder. You know, if she doesn't finish doing what she's doing or something, maybe it doesn't have side effects on people like that. So I don't know, maybe I guess, I don't know, because some part of me is also thinking like, there must be something special about Seth. I mean, there's something special about him and Ricky. I mean, I spoke on Ricky. Richie, anyway, because they are geckos, you know, the two brothers from the legend and stuff, which hasn't come up, but. This episode, too. Like I said, it, it reminds me of something like you. You know, I usually don't talk about movies like that, but you know, when you have other people kind of reference, it's like, oh, this is like an 80s movie, this is like a 90s movie. It's like, it kind of, the monster kind of felt like a 80s type of movie monster. Maybe that was a point. Maybe I'm insulting the people behind the show, but it's just kind of like, I'm not saying that in a bad way, it's in a good way. And I like the fact is that um, they came together and uh, Scott, uh, Bert, and uh, Tanner came together and kicked his ass. So that was pretty cool, so... I mean, we did get to see Richie kind of getting taken by Amaru at the end of the episode. She ended up, um, he kind of sacrificed himself so that the lady and her son could get away, which is very noble. Like I said, it's like, he's not 100% a bad guy. That's why part of me thinks maybe there is a part of him that does regret doing what he did, but he's just, he just, he just let that side of him kind of get the best of him with the whole Earl situation. So maybe, I don't know. Maybe he's just so caught up in this, like, whole situation that he's just... Like, because I'm trying to understand why he would fly off the handle at Freddy like that and just kind of, like, make matters worse by saying that stuff. It's like, you know you're going to piss him off and you would expect him to kind of work with you. I mean, especially now that you kind of got captured. I mean, I doubt he's going to be all that willing to come after you. I mean, I'm sure Seth is. Whether he has their backing or not, he's going to go after his brother, so... And we also got a final note, uh, 
had a martyr because I guess the truck they took was Freddy and saw the picture of his ex-wife and his uh, little girl. So you can see where that where that's going to lead them. So I'm very interested to see what it is that she wants from Richie because she was like, "Oh, Rich, Richie could be useful," but it's like, in what way could he be useful? And I know I brought her up earlier, just uh, it's kind of an it's an as an aside, and I was curious like. Where is Kisa? Because she still hasn't made an appearance since she disappeared when they went to go get her. So, eventually she's going to have to pop back up because they're going to need her, like, you know, all hands on deck for this, you know. Just, especially because with every second that's passing, Amaru is getting closer to her ultimate goal, so. But that's really all I want to talk about in this episode. To the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.